In information theory, the Shannon-Hartley theorem tells the maximum rate at which information can be transmitted over a communications channel of a specified bandwidth in the presence of noise. It is an application of the noisy channel coding theorem to the archetypal case of a continuous time analog communications channel subject to Gaussian noise. The theorem establishes Shannon's channel capacity for such a communication link, a bound on the maximum amount of error-free information per time unit that can be transmitted with a specified bandwidth in the presence of the noise interference, assuming that the signal power is bounded, and that the Gaussian noise process is characterized by a known power or power spectral density. The law is named after Claude Shannon and Ralph Hartley. Topic. Statement of the theorem The Shannon-Hartley theorem states the channel capacity C C meaning the theoretical tightest upper bound on the information rate of data that can be communicated at an arbitrarily low error rate using an average received signal power S S through an analog communication channel subject to additive white Gaussian noise of power n display style n where c display style c is the channel capacity in bits per second a theoretical upper bound on the net bit rate information rate sometimes denoted i display style i Excluding error correction codes, b display style b is the bandwidth of the channel in hertz passband bandwidth in case of a bandpass signal. S display style s is the average received signal power over the bandwidth in case of a carrier modulated passband transmission, often denoted c, measured in watts or volts squared. N display style N is the average power of the noise and interference over the bandwidth measured in watts or volts squared and S N display style S N is the signal to noise ratio SNR or the carrier to noise ratio CNR of the communication signal to the noise and interference at the receiver expressed as a linear power ratio not as logarithmic decibels topic historical development During the late 1920s, Harry Nyquist and Ralph Hartley developed a handful of fundamental ideas related to the transmission of information, particularly in the context of the telegraph as a communication system. At the time, these concepts were powerful breakthroughs individually, but they were not part of a comprehensive theory. In the 1940s, Claude Shannon developed the concept of channel capacity, based in part on the ideas of Nyquist and Hartley, and then formulated a complete theory of information and its transmission. Topic. Nyquist rate In 1927, Nyquist determined that the number of independent pulses that could be put through a telegraph channel per unit time is limited to twice the bandwidth of the channel. In symbols F P 2 B display style F underscore P L E Q 2 B where F P Display style f underscore p is the pulse frequency in pulses per second, and b display style b is the bandwidth in hertz. The quantity two b display style two b later came to be called the Nyquist rate, and transmitting at the limiting pulse rate of two. B 
display style 2b pulses per second as signaling at the Nyquist rate. Nyquist published his results in 1928 as part of his paper Certain Topics in Telegraph Transmission Theory. <laughs> Harley's Law During 1928, Hartley formulated a way to quantify information and its line rate also known as data signaling rate R bits per second. This method, later known as Harley's Law, became an important precursor for Shannon's more sophisticated notion of channel capacity. Hartley argued that the maximum number of distinguishable pulse levels that can be transmitted and received reliably over a communications channel is limited by the dynamic range of the signal amplitude and the precision with which the receiver can distinguish amplitude levels. Specifically, if the amplitude of the transmitted signal is restricted to the range of minus a plus a volts, and the precision of the receiver is plus or minus delta v volts, then the maximum number of distinct pulses m is given by m equals 1 plus a delta v display style m equals 1 plus a over delta 5 by taking information per pulse in bit pulse to be the base 2 logarithm of the number of distinct messages m that could be sent, Hartley constructed a measure of the line rate r as r equals f p log 2 m display style r equals f underscore p log underscore 2 m where f p display style f underscore p is the pulse rate, also known as the symbol rate, in symbols per second or boo. Hartley then combined the above quantification with Nyquist's observation that the number of independent pulses that could be put through a channel of bandwidth b display style b hertz was 2 b display style 2 b pulses per second to arrive at his quantitative measure for achievable line rate harley's law is sometimes quoted as just a proportionality between the analog bandwidth b display style b in hertz and what today is called the digital bandwidth r display style r in bit s other times it is quoted in this more quantitative form as an achievable line rate of r display style r bits per second r 2 b log 2 m Display style R leq 2 B log underscore 2 M. Hartley did not work out exactly how the number M should depend on the noise statistics of the channel, or how the communication could be made reliable even when individual symbol pulses could not be reliably distinguished to M levels. With Gaussian noise statistics, system designers had to choose a very conservative value of M display style m to achieve a low error rate the concept of an error free capacity awaited claude shannon who built on harley's observations about a logarithmic measure of information and nyquist's observations about the effect of bandwidth limitations harley's rate result can be viewed as the capacity of an errorless m airy channel of 2 b display style 2b symbols per second some authors refer to it as a capacity but such an errorless channel is an idealization and if m is chosen small enough to make the noisy channel nearly errorless the result is necessarily less than the shannon capacity of the noisy channel of bandwidth b display style b 
which is the Hartley-Shannon result that followed later. Topic noisy channel coding theorem and capacity Claude Shannon's development of information theory during World War II provided the next big step in understanding how much information could be reliably communicated through noisy channels. Building on Harley's foundation, Shannon's noisy channel coding theorem 1948 describes the maximum possible efficiency of error-correcting methods versus levels of noise interference and data corruption. The proof of the theorem shows that a randomly constructed error correcting code is essentially as good as the best possible code. The theorem is proved through the statistics of such random codes. Shannon's theorem shows how to compute a channel capacity from a statistical description of a channel, and establishes that given a noisy channel with capacity C and information transmitted at a line rate R, display style R, then if R C, display style R, there exists a coding technique which allows the probability of error at the receiver to be made arbitrarily small. This means that theoretically, it is possible to transmit information nearly without error up to nearly a limit of c, display style c, bits per second. The converse is also important. If r greater than c, display style r greater than c, the probability of error at the receiver increases without bound as the rate is increased. So no useful information can be transmitted beyond the channel capacity. The theorem does not address the rare situation in which rate and capacity are equal. The Shannon-Hartley theorem establishes what that channel capacity is for a finite bandwidth continuous time channel subject to Gaussian noise. It connects Harley's result with Shannon's channel capacity theorem in a form that is equivalent to specifying the M in Harley's line rate formula in terms of a signal-to-noise ratio, but achieving reliability through error correction coding rather than through reliably distinguishable pulse levels. If there were such a thing as a noise-free analog channel, one could transmit unlimited amounts of error-free data over it per unit of time note, an infinite bandwidth analog channel can't transmit unlimited amounts of error-free data, without infinite signal power. Real channels, however, are subject to limitations imposed by both finite bandwidth and nonzero noise. Bandwidth and noise affect the rate at which information can be transmitted over an analog channel. Bandwidth limitations alone do not impose a cap on the maximum information rate because it is still possible for the signal to take on an indefinitely large number of different voltage levels on each symbol pulse, with each slightly different level being assigned a different meaning or bit sequence. Taking into account both noise and bandwidth limitations, however, there is a limit to the amount of information that can be transferred by a signal of a bounded power, even when sophisticated multi-level encoding techniques are used. In the channel considered by the Shannon-Hartley theorem, noise and signal are combined by addition. That is, the receiver measures a signal that is equal to the sum of the signal encoding the desired information and a continuous random variable that represents the noise. This addition creates uncertainty as to the original signal's value. If the receiver has some information about the random process that generates the noise, one can in principle recover the information in the original signal by considering all possible states of the noise process. In the case of the Shannon-Hartley theorem, the noise is assumed to be generated by a Gaussian process with a known variance. Since the variance of a Gaussian process is equivalent to its power, it is conventional to call this variance the noise power. Such a channel is called the additive white Gaussian noise channel, because Gaussian noise is added to the signal white means equal amounts of noise at all frequencies within the channel bandwidth. Such noise can arise both from random sources of energy and also from coding and measurement error at the sender and receiver respectively. Since sums of independent Gaussian random variables are themselves Gaussian random variables, this conveniently simplifies analysis, if one assumes that such error sources are also Gaussian and independent.
Topic: Implications of the theorem. Topic: Comparison of Shannon's capacity to Harley's law. Comparing the channel capacity to the information rate from Harley's law, we can find the effective number of distinguishable levels m 2 b log 2 m equals b log 2 1 plus s n Display style two B log underscore two M equals B log underscore two left one plus FRAC S N right M equals one plus S N Display style M equals SQRT one plus FRAC S N the square root effectively converts the power ratio back to a voltage ratio, so the number of levels is approximately proportional to the ratio of signal RMS amplitude to noise standard deviation. This similarity in form between Shannon's capacity and Harley's law should not be interpreted to mean that m m pulse levels can be literally sent without any confusion. More levels are needed to allow for redundant coding and error correction, but the net data rate that can be approached with coding is equivalent to using that m display style m in Harley's law. Topic: <laughs> Frequency dependent colored noise case. In the simple version above, the signal and noise are fully uncorrelated, in which case S plus N display style S plus N is the total power of the received signal and noise together. A generalization of the above equation for the case where the additive noise is not white or that the S N Display style S N is not constant with frequency over the bandwidth is obtained by treating the channel as many narrow, independent Gaussian channels in parallel. C equals zero B log two one plus S F N F D F display style C equals int underscore zero carrot B log underscore two left one plus FRAC S F N F right D F where C display style C is the channel capacity in bits per second B display style B is the bandwidth of the channel in HZ S F display style S F is the signal power spectrum N F display style N F is the noise power spectrum F display style F is frequency in HZ. Note the theorem only applies to Gaussian stationary process noise. This formula's way of introducing frequency dependent noise cannot describe all continuous time noise processes. For example, consider a noise process consisting of adding a random wave whose amplitude is 1 or minus 1 at any point in time, and a channel that adds such a wave to the source signal. Such a wave's frequency components are highly dependent. Though such a noise may have a high power, it is fairly easy to transmit a continuous signal with much less power than one would need if the underlying noise was a sum of independent noises in each frequency band. <laughs> 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 
Topic: Approximations. For large or small and constant signal to noise ratios, the capacity formula can be approximated. Topic: Bandwidth limited case. When the SNR is large SN greater than greater than 1, then the capacity is logarithmic in power and approximately linear in bandwidth. This is called the bandwidth limited regime. C approximately equals 0 0.332 B S N R I N D B display style C approximately 0.332 C D O T B C D O T Mathem S N R in D B where S N R I N D B equals 10 log 10 s n display style mathrm snr in db equals 10 log underscore 10 s over n Topic power limited case Similarly, when the SNR is small if SNC approximately equals 1.44 BSN, display style C approximately 1.44 CDOT B CDOT S over N, in this low SNR approximation, capacity is independent of bandwidth if the noise is white, of spectral density N0, display style N underscore 0 watts per per hertz, in which case the total noise power is BN0 display style B C D O T N underscore 0, C approximately equals 1.44 SN0 display style C approximately 1. 44 C D O T S over N underscore 0. Topic. Examples. At a SNR of 0 decibels signal power equals noise power the capacity in bits, S is equal to the bandwidth in hertz. If the SNR is 20 decibels, and the bandwidth available is 4 kHz, which is appropriate for telephone communications, then C. Topic. 4000 log 2 1 plus 100. 4000 log 2 101 topic 26.63 kilobits per second note that the value of sn 100 is equivalent to the snr of 20 decibels if the requirement is to transmit at 50 kilobits per second, and a bandwidth of 10 kilohertz is used, then the minimum S, N required is given by 50,000. Topic. 10,000 log 2, 1 plus S, N, so C, B. 5 then S, N. Topic twenty five minus one thirty one corresponding to an SNR of fourteen point nine one decibels ten x log ten thirty one. What is the channel capacity for a signal having a one megahertz bandwidth received with a SNR of minus thirty decibels? That means a signal deeply buried in noise. Minus 30 decibels means a s n. Topic 10 minus 3. It leads to a maximal rate of information of 106 log 2 1 plus 10 minus 3. 
1443 bits s these values are typical of the received ranging signals of the GPS, where the navigation message is sent at 50 bits s below the channel capacity for the given s, n, and whose bandwidth is spread to around 1 MHz by a pseudo-noise multiplication before transmission. As stated above, channel capacity is proportional to the bandwidth of the channel and to the logarithm of s n r. This means channel capacity can be increased linearly either by increasing the channel's bandwidth given a fixed SNR requirement or, with fixed bandwidth, by using higher order modulations that need a very high SNR to operate. As the modulation rate increases, the spectral efficiency improves, but at the cost of the SNR requirement. Thus, there is an exponential rise in the SNR requirement if one adopts a 1.6 QAM or 6.4 QAM C, quadrature amplitude modulation, however, the spectral efficiency improves. In MIMO, when the number of antenna beams are increased the channel capacity also gets increased. The correlation between the number of MIMO antennas and throughput is still not linear. Topic. See also Nyquist-Shannon sampling theorem E flat, N0 equals equals notes <laughs>